my normal snowboarding trousers are bright orange, so it's probably like harder to see me in a pingu suit. <laughs> so you're into snowboarding as well. I've un- understood yeah. from social media. I mean, it feels like it's this parasocial real relationship with people that you see whatever they let you see, and then you feel like you know everything, but you only know a small piece. But I'm I'm going with what I know. Uh, yeah. Snowboarding in a pingu suit as well. Yeah, that was uh, a new for this year. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it looked really great, and it looked like fun. So it was really good fun. No, I had a an old onesie that. When onesies first became a thing, I got a penguin one, and then I never wore, never wear it anymore. So I was like, "How can I fit this over my snowboard kit? Because that would be quite funny." Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess you were the only penguin in the on the hills that time, so it was, was easy yeah. easy to spot you. <laughs> well, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> For everyone else, I mean, that's, yeah. uh, isn't that one of the reasons to do it, or just uh, to have a if you need a reason? Say, oh, well, well, my friends need to see where I am because I'm so cool. Yeah, that would work. I mean, my normal snowboarding trousers are bright orange, so it's probably like harder to see me in a pingu suit. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> the pingu suit makes uh, better content, though, it, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was a few years ago. Um, there was uh, these parents, they had uh, a daughter probably three or four years old and she was uh, snowboarding but in like a dinosaur type uh, like uh, winter dress and then I had to google it but of course like many of those things that you don't get them in adult sizes and I I mean I really wanted that one (laughs) so uh, yeah that's probably why I'm venturing into sewing at some point. <laughs> I, I need to make myself a, a dinosaur skiing outfit. I think Christine going down the slopes would be a sight to see. That, that sounds be... different. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of sharp corners and that sort of thing. It needs a bit of padding, but yeah, that would be... You need to go when the slope is opening in the evening so you can get the full... Uh headlights uh brake lights yeah. experience but, yeah, that's that really cool. scary seeing coming down the hill I would say. <laughs> yeah. like a deer in the headlights <laughs> do you guys ski or you... snowboard nope um yes <laughs> but i think the skis has been propped up against the wall poor when did we move in here? Yeah, we lived here for five years. So I haven't been skiing for at least five years. And I can't remember before that. So, yeah, I do ski, but I don't ski. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not one of those parents who put their kids on skis as soon as they could stand up. No, I believe that should be uh, by choice. Um, we did discuss it this winter, the, the oldest one. We could try to rent some skis and go to the slope to see if it's something that she's interested in. But uh, well, it seems like the the time window this year is uh, fading out. So maybe next year. That's going to be my next question, actually. So if you guys want to go skiing, do you have to go somewhere to ski or can you just literally step out the back door in skis? Well, this winter I, I could have just stepped out for cross country skiing, but yeah. I, I don't do that. So uh, I need to travel to find a slope, but it's I think the closest one is ten minutes away. So, <laughs> so yeah, we got some <laughs> some close close by, but they're pretty crappy. So if you want a good one, you have to travel a couple of hours, I think, and then there's really proper good ones. But I mean, I don't like I don't like to freeze uh, i don't like high speeds and i don't like high altitudes <laughs> so i mean going up slopes no that's no that's not for me and no. you don't like people uh, nope. yeah I, I, I see uh, i see a pattern here <laughs> I'm, I'm just quite impressed to use the word don't like instead of hate <laughs> <laughs> well there are degrees in hell as well so yeah <laughs> KJ is actually 75 at heart. <laughs> Part of me, uh, yes. Part of me has always been a grumpy old man. Well, 
when I'm thinking a bit more about it, um, I think it was in 2010, I went to Australia and then it was the hottest summer in years and me and a friend, I think it was outside of Sydney, we just stumbled over like an outdoor store who also had skiing equipment and we were so fascinated. I mean, we were in the hottest place on earth and like skiing equipment, of course, the two Norwegians uh, just stumbled through the door and <laughs> and they had uh, a lot of things on sale because obviously the summer. So that's maybe the one thing I bought on that entire trip was actually snow snowboard pants, bright yellow ones. And had to bring those with me for five weeks backpacking Australia. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the brilliant thing was I got home. And then later that year, uh, me and my wife, we went to London. And then I stumbled into another like outdoor store. That's, uh, I, I tend to do that for some reason. <laughs> and then I, I found the jacket, the matching jacket on sale. So I bought that one. <laughs> Uh, and of course, it's the it's uh, it's Volcom, so it's like the snowboard. You can sip them together and so on. So like, um, yeah, I bought the pants and jacket on the total opposites of the world. Uh, then, <laughs> like, all right, I needed a helmet. Where should we travel to get that one? So it, it became a running joke. But that's been my uh, driving attire for many years. But uh, we have to go to go to japan to buy a helmet in south america i guess to buy boots or something yeah. like that but i think um, you... i'm sorry you wear ski gear to drive in as well did you just say so it was your driving attire yeah uh it's a it's a bad translation of uh yeah okay <laughs> uh, if you directly translate it is driving skis so, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, I have been driving in a car with them as well because I also use them for just playing in the snow with the kids because they are brilliant because when you sip them together, you don't get any snow in. So it's, uh, it's really nice. So yeah, that's a, that's a long answer to our short question. <laughs> <laughs> so long, I can't remember what the question was. <laughs> well, you were the one who asked it. So uh, do you do you stand? <laughs> there we go. Do you do any skiing, Glenn? <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> No, I've never never been to anywhere where you can ski. To be fair, I mean, I've been to France, but not the front, not the parts of France that have the slopes, and only in the summertime. Because, like KJ, I don't really like the cold either. But I like the sunshine. <laughs> well, to be fair, I don't really like sunshine either. <laughs> <laughs> I like climate control. <laughs> Somewhere between eighteen and twenty-five. Is that's nice enough? No more than less. <laughs> Do you go on holiday, KJ? I try not to. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually we talked about this with my parents. Me growing up on a farm, we had animals. We couldn't uh, couldn't go anywhere other than over the day because the cow needs milk. Cows needs milking. Um, so I don't know if that's been why I don't enjoy traveling now because i never did it as a kid or if i always been like this and just were happy we're not we didn't go anywhere <laughs> no i i get i get too anxious about the traveling part i don't mind being in other places but planning out and getting tickets have everything packed or uh, setting the alarm to go to go to the train station or airport or whatever it is and uh, i don't like it I get I get anxious so easily. Well, that's the nice thing, of course. You have to take turns, so one of the turns you will have to endure, of course. But uh, me and my wife do that sometimes when we go on a holiday. It's just like it's it's your turn. Just fix anything and just uh, give me the dates, and I'll be ready. And then uh, you don't know what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> that's, that's fine. I mean, that's the nice thing with go, going away with uh, with uh, with work, uh, or I mean, the the group travels you do with work to actually socialize with your colleagues. It's like like being a kid again when you go somewhere. It's, oh, everything is planned. You just have to show up at a place, and then you get put on a plane, and you go somewhere, and then someone finds you and takes you to a hotel. And oh, now it's dinner. Now we're gonna 
eat. Oh, now we're going to go over here and look at this thing. Now we're going to go in over here and look at that. And you don't have to do anything other than just tag along, more or less. <laughs> Me and Michelle play an interesting game when it comes to holidays. She, um, she really does like to be in control. And I'm quite happy for her to be in control as well. But she procrastinates over it so much and gets completely sick of it. And I'll say, I'll just book it. I'll just book something. She's like, fine, you just book something. And I pretend to book something. And you see the panic in her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and then miraculously, things get booked very quickly after that. <laughs> so she's a procrastinating control freak. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm like that. <laughs> <laughs> it makes for good entertainment. So, KJ, has it been windy in uh, Sweden the past few days? Yes, uh, a little bit too windy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> On the Sunday morning, we were sitting casually, eating breakfast, and hearing a thum outside. And a big tree just fell over our driveway, just missing the car and the house. But, like, I mean, the, the trunk of it was, like... Um, maybe one, one and a half meters from the car and two meters from the house or something like that, just scraping the sides <laughs> with the branches. And one of the branches, we have um, uh, one of those g- uh, garage tel- tents uh, over the car. So one of the branches just poked a hole through the tarp and was waving like 10, 15 centimeters over the roof of the car. So that was... That's a lucky escape. Yeah, but the mailbox was crushed into oblivion. <laughs> um, the mailbox, the same mailbox that was new like one year ago when another tree fell down. And <laughs> when, the, when it came to cut it up, one of the branches bounced on the asphalt and smashed that mailbox. So, yeah. So the council owned this piece of land, yes. didn't they? And um, you've had trees fall down before, haven't you? Yes, they came, uh, it was like last year, a bit earlier than this, one tree fell down and they came and we said, okay, you know, look at it. Maybe some of the other trees are not feeling that well. Oh yeah, this one is, is not that good. We take that down. But the rest of them, they will, they will be fine. And a while later, <laughs> another one fell. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay, all of these are bad. Yeah, we'll take all of them down. And now another one fell. So I think we're going to have them out there and have another look, I feel, because that might be good to have for insurance purposes coming forward if another tree falls, because the rest of them are more or less aimed at the house. So that could go bad. It's it's really not that hard to tell if the trees are poorly as well. I mean, it doesn't take much looking at and figuring out. It shouldn't. (laughs) <laughs> but could you contact them and say all right before you have to pay for uh, the uh, insurance claim of one of those trees crashing into our house why don't you just give me that piece of plot and then i take care of it and you don't have any yeah. uh, liability anymore i mean it seems like a nice spot to put a workshop or a... yeah that would be that would be nice nice and yeah. not have to worry that someone else finds that plot nice enough to build a house on but yeah that's a good plan that's at least worth bringing up with them kj surely yeah i i, I divert all of those questions to my wife because she she works uh for the council of the council next door what's it used to say another council one one away because you don't want to work for yeah. your own council. <laughs> a council in a different borough. Yes, that's probably what it's tra- translated <laughs> to. Uh, this is all sounds like uh, Midsummer Murders to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's what's the difference? Because that's a stationary one, as opposed to the wheelbarrow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, similar, very, very similar. Yeah, right, I think I think that's a, a wheelbarrow. <laughs> wheelbarrow, what would that be? <laughs> <laughs> that's what you said without the wheel. I mean, we all heard it, right? It's like, 
Well, with you editing, now it, it will be that what he said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm, um, this uh, accident with the mailbox reminded me of uh, when I was a kid. My, my dad got sick of the snowplow taking our mailbox, so he made one from like four millimeter steel. Uh, welded to an uh, H-beam and uh, <laughs> secured to the ground in an oil barrel full of concrete. So I'm thinking maybe I should do the same. <laughs> Something to to take the force of another tree. But yeah, as Howard said a couple of episodes ago, a project that la- like that would take like three years. So I guess... <laughs> I guess the next time the mailbox mailbox gets crushed, I should have a replacement ready. Why would it take so long? It's, I mean, welding something together is a lot quicker than watching glue dry. Yeah, but you you're not taking in uh, in consideration all the procrastination and getting material <laughs> and pondering over designs and more procrastination <laughs> and all of the other projects that co- comes up and. And there's being a new Zelda released and that sort of thing. That takes time. <laughs> a new Zelda release. Yeah, and that's, that, I mean, I think if you look at my uh, maker timeline, you can see severe, uh, oh, what's the inverse of a bump? A slope? Uh, yeah, you, dip, you can see Dip impact. in a timeline? Yeah. yeah, a definite dip in a timeline, both when... Uh, um, uh, Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom came out because, yeah, that took some time away from it. Chloe's nodding away. Yes, there, are you into that a lot well? of hours on Breath of the Wild? <laughs> you don't really want to know how many hours you've been <laughs> just walking around Hyrule. I think that's that's brilliant because I I see a lot of the games that I played when I was younger, of course. My demographic are now adults who has jobs and disposable income, and some of us have spare time. And I've I've seen a lot of remakes, but also like uh, a new game in a series that's like twenty plus years old. But now the people are like, "Oh, should we make a follow up? Yeah, let's just make a Kickstarter." And then, of course, all these uh, now adult kids with money is like, yeah. Oh, I'm in. Just take my money. (laughs) So I've I've seen a couple of Kickstarters for some uh, old classic games that's like been funded within two hours of launching (laughs) or something like that. (laughs) It's funny that you started that sentence with that. I can, you know, I see all the old games that I used to play with. I literally reach just here. Um, I can see all the old games I play with (laughs) just just here. (laughs) All my old PlayStation One games. Oh, yeah, that's I've got a... my PlayStation 1 downstairs still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got some classics on there. Resident Evil. One of my favourites. <laughs> Always been into the zombie thing, though. It explains a lot, actually. <laughs> yeah. With all the murder. Yeah. Yeah. And the gardening yeah. tools, shovels, yeah. line yeah. of work, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talking to dead people each week. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, line up, I'll knock them yeah. down. <laughs> well, might be low on energy some weeks. <laughs> <I'll admit. laughs> but I wouldn't say we're dead. Or are you talking in a, only on the inside? <laughs> <laughs> yes, on the inside, definitely. So. Um, Changing the subject, my um, latest video has actually started getting a few views now, thankfully. I was a bit worried about it. <laughs> the efforts were definitely weren't equaling the rewards on that to start out with. I think after, um, I think 18 hours out, it had done 39 views. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I mean, that's so sad when, you, when it's a project you really like and then it's not really, yeah. no one cares. And then you just throw something together for a laugh and then it, <laughs> and then it just takes off and you don't really yeah it's d- discouraging <laughs> yeah I've, I've had the uh, okay. of course uh, the last half year 
all the the shorts or all the Instagram reels I make, I just dump them over at TikTok as well. But I don't basically follow them up. Um, but uh, the last few videos has done kind of good. So I think I had like uh, 30, 40 followers just overnight on one of them. So just looking into the... It's a stretch yet, but... What happens if that is my main <laughs> follower? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> because I don't really want to. <laughs> Spend the rest of your days making content, uh, content for a platform you hate. Yeah, <laughs> and there is... I mean, with Instagram, I, I can see some correlation between the YouTube videos and it's the same people, but TikTok is like... It's not only a different demographic. It could be on a different planet somewhere else. I mean, I'm not sure if any of the people there actually know what YouTube is. So it's... Uh... Do you play around on TikTok, Chloe? No. I don't have oh, yeah. time for another platform. Yeah. But you do repost your Instagram stuff on YouTube as well. Yeah. Yeah, I do that. Because that's the only two you use. You, you, you use them. Yeah. Yeah. Do you two use TikTok? Nope. That's I mean I'm not one for short format content. I mean these I yeah. I went on it for a oh, while yeah. and um just really started disliking myself so came off. <laughs> <laughs> you feel dirty. <laughs> yeah, I, I did I deleted I just deleted everything off there in the end. Don't know why, I just didn't like it. I'm starting to feel that way about Facebook as well. Mm. I'm on Facebook just because it's so easy to, you know, it automatically goes from Instagram to Facebook. Yeah. And uh, some of the reels do better on Facebook than they do on Instagram. And, you know, I'm all about receiving the love. That's when you get those likes, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> like me, see me. Yeah. Validate that I exist. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit depressing on the uh, number one group mistakes Facebook page though. I've been I don't know why I can't link the two accounts to the Instagram. Um but as I've been posting our little reels on there separately and the last one I think got one play and I'm, I'm pretty sure that was just me. <laughs> <laughs> just, just really sad. Do we have a Facebook page? <laughs> 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 Right from the beginning. Well, that shows how often I'm on that platform. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a that's another question. With I haven't updated the web page in for ages, and after I pulled the statistics, and it shows that it was all bots. <laughs> that's a, <laughs> the visitor number. So it's like, mm, don't put the hours in, and then at some point it's going to be a invoice for a, another year of the domain. It's like, mm, is that the money we want to use? I mean, just as well <laughs> use it on a license for <laughs> Riverside. <laughs> As, um, I, I think a, a separate website like that's uh, it's never going to go anywhere really, is it? It's never going to be needed. Probably no, not. I don't, I don't see it. It's, I sometimes stumble into a few web pages, but it's often on my phone so it's uh or unless need... it's at work and i'm bored <laughs> so... I mean, you need a reason to go to a web page yeah, yeah you need a spe- you're not uh browsing the internet like in the 90s where like uh, trying to see what you find <laughs> yeah where everything was fun and exciting yeah <laughs> or is it just us who are old i don't know i i have a theory there that you had of course in the early 90s when all the web pages were like a pixelated uh, gif animations and yeah i mean you had to have a certain level of interest and technical knowledge to even make the crappiest web page <laughs> and you found a lot of fun things there and of course i remember the you bought computer magazines and they had like of course the centerfold was actually just a list of web pages so you could, oh, there's a web page for uh, how to make a bottle rockets or something, and you could go in there. And that was the good old days. Uh, but now, I mean, anyone can just go on a web page and just make my homepage, and then you have a template and uh, you have something generating the text. So I think the the step in to make a homepage has made a lot of them 
less interesting. But then again, yeah. uh, the corporate world just came in and wiped everything out. I, I feel a bit the same way when it comes to uh, programming and electronics, because when I, I started out in doing, you had to I mean, program in assembler and that sort of thing. I mean, the really hardcore stuff. And now it's just put in a Raspberry Pi and download something and everything works. I mean, what's the fun in that? I mean, you have to troubleshoot it for like a week to make it work. That's the fun part. The only computer I've ever tried to program was a long time ago, and that was my brother's ZX81 Spectrum, which I think was the first, one of the first home computers. And the programming was 10, go to 20, yeah. <laughs> 20, do this. And, you know, you spend half an hour programming it for a lot of colored lines to be drawn on the screen yeah. at the end. <laughs> but then you felt like God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm a hacker. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, yeah. I, I see it now, and a lot of makers are also making... Uh, a lot of kids and uh, have a very focus on like teaching kids programming and um, I follow a few teachers and like in primary and secondary school there's a lot of focus on like kids should learn programming and I kind of agree uh, I'm, I'm more programming is like a necessary evil I like to build something mechanical and if I need to control it then yes I need to copy some code and try to get it to work. But I th think there was someone who said that, all right, but if you are like my kids, uh, when they start in school, if they learn programming, I mean, it's too late because with AI now, you can, you're very close to the threshold that you could actually just talk to uh so, some software interface and you can just tell i want this to do that and it will write the code for you so you have a generation now who's going to learn a lot of programming that they'll end up not needing a lot faster than any one of us maybe anticipated maybe you think that will make <laughs> you think that will make programmers obsolete then it just be a, a dying art and then at some point you know when the computers try to kill us. That depends on how then, well. Then nobody knows how to program anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's an interesting discussion that, uh, like, uh, going down the same depressing path that we started the <laughs> podcast with. But I mean, you you have now computers uh, coming to conclusions um, where we don't understand how they got to the answer. I mean, we can control and see that, okay, but this answer is correct, but we have no idea how the AI went about coming up with that answer. And I think you are on to something there, Glenn, but at, at some point, nobody knows how to program because you, you don't need to, but I mean, the computers have become so advanced and so self-sufficient uh, that we can't even understand them if we try to. So it's like, we're going to be the monkeys. My computer's not taking over my house anyway. It's about to die. <laughs> How can you have a computer that's got 120 gig of space on it and 100 gig of that is taken up with the operating systems? <laughs> that's just plan, planned <laughs> obsolescence. It's trying to take over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, that, that's what you get when you have crappy coders who doesn't care about. Uh, I mean, storage space is is uh, cheap, so you just no one programs efficiently anymore. Just oh, I need this function, so I import this library of five gigs because I need this one function from it because that's easier than just making it on my own. Mm. So yeah, that's you know. I was editing the video at the weekend and it's um, it's 20 gig, 20 gig spare on this computer and you know I started approaching that and because all that sort of in the temporary files I, I believe I, I don't really understand it obviously everything just starts lagging and the computer starts slowing down and it's just bloody annoying I was like why why is there just not more space on it <laughs> I guess that's just me not understanding how to do things properly I suppose 
Well, I mean, it's of course everything is compounding, of course. But I think the last fifteen minute video I made, I mean, the raw files is like eight gigs. <laughs> so it, it's yeah. it's insane. I, I think a, a future project for you, Glenn, is is you uh, upgrading your computer and changing changing the hard drive to a bigger one. That would be a great video. <laughs> <laughs> That should be a live stream. Your yeah. first live stream. Glenn upgrading his hard drive. I would watch that. Yeah, but uh, you could you could do pay per view there. <laughs> or happily chip in. I don't I don't think that's gonna happen. I think I'll just go down to Cruise and buy a a bigger computer. No, that one's the, that one looks the same size as the one I've got. <laughs> go be a bigger one. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's that's actually true a lot of people uh, in the early days uh, when my father had uh, the computer company and they also sold computers uh, people were calling the stationary cabinet for the hard drive because they've heard about hard drives and uh, you have a problem with your hard drive and of course they disconnected all the cable and came in with it under their arm and there's something wrong with the hard drive and then of course mm-hmm. Okay, so you know there's something specifically with your hard drive. Yeah, it doesn't turn on. Oh, that's a power supply. <laughs> yeah, in my hard drive. Okay, <laughs> okay. The, the big box is a cabinet. The hard drive is a teeny tiny bit inside. <laughs> no, that, this is the hard drive. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, now you've just said that, there's two much bigger computers up in my loft. I think I'll just drag one of those downstairs. There'll have plenty of space on them. Yeah, and if you put one on top of the other, it's even bigger. <laughs> True yeah. story. You store lots of files in that. <laughs> I really should purge my uh, electronic storage because I think I've never thrown any computer parts away. So I have like a stack, like five, six... Uh, hard drives on like 200 megabytes or something like that <laughs> because that that, uh, that could be good to have but yeah i don't think they will ever get plugged in again <laughs> maybe do some projects with them i remember back at school we did some things when you booted up a computer and then just you remove the the outer casing of the hard drive to see how long the computer lasted until it broke down just from a speck of dust coming in. <laughs> Maybe that could be fun. I think it might be an operating system on some of them. Yeah. Who has time? I think I'd quite like to get one of the old computers down and turn it into a four slice toaster or something like that. <laughs> That'd be good. <laughs> just having it overheat the <laughs> like the processor is the heating element for making um... toast. <laughs> I'm just going to render a movie gonna... here and then. <laughs> um... I don't remember her name, but she has an Instagram account where she she has a lot of old computers uh, with various stages of operating systems from DOS to Windows, uh, all the iterations. And she basically just posts playing old, uh, like uh, retro games. And I thought, okay, I, I remember in my heyday, when we, I think I got my own computer, my first computer. And of course, it was uh, Wolfenstein, Doom, uh, all those like third person shooters. It was like the, we thought it could never get any better. I mean, the, gra- <laughs> the graphics was insane. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. I had enough hard disk space. I could put the entire internet on my hard drive. I think it was 420 megabytes or something like that. It was huge. Uh, I mean, I got a CD-ROM that's uh, like uh, double speed. I mean, it's so fast, <laughs> you, you could probably send a shuttle air to space or something like that. It, it felt just like huge. And I thought, ooh, I would like to have one. Just prop it up and then really go old school. But the problem is they are now <laughs> insanely expensive because obviously I'm not the only one who's... Uh, feeling nostalgic so they are i mean a working one will set you back uh, like thousands of pounds it's insane (laughs) wow 
I'm sure my dad's got some stash somewhere. <laughs> He's a massive hoarder of things like that. Yeah, probably sitting on a gold mine. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. Just have to find I mean, the market. Don't, don't tell him that. I'll just... just uh, you can do a deal with Havard at Maker Center. Yeah. yeah. I'll just go in their loft and they're not looking. Yeah. Help him clean it out. <laughs> yeah. I can clean your loft for free. That's not suspicious at all. <laughs> Arriving in a Lamborghini the next week. <laughs> oh, this, this old thing? <laughs> <laughs> sure, he has a Lamborghini for you now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> More a Ferrari girl. <laughs> I uh, had to hand my company car back at the start of the year, so I bought my own Ford Focus Estate. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> That's a classic. We had a Ford. We had a Ford Focus. We called it Brian because it was such a boring car. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I upgraded because I had a hatchback before, so now I can fit sheet materials in it. The dog. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the the station wagon as we call it um, so that that's going to be my next car um, and it's going to be an old one so of course I'm so I can unleash my every maker idea he's like um, oh I uh, want the fancy cup holder here okay just pull out the drill and uh, pop rivet tools and <laughs> ta-da <laughs> my car is just too nice now to uh, do that I don't want to give my kids any idea. <laughs> Lead by example. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, they are, they're just getting to that stage that they, they know where all the tools are. They have seen that using them. So it's like, oh, this is the drill. <laughs> so, yeah. So now you have to make sure that the table saw is unplugged every night. Yeah. I have a light case of OCD as well. So I actually unplug the workshop from one end to the other. And then um, sometimes I also go inside and did I remember? So I have to go back to my workshop and do it all again. And on the worst nights, I might have three or four rounds in my workshop. Just uh, did I unplug that? So, so. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so that's not uh, the biggest risk. <laughs> I bought a sensor for my workshop door. So when it closes, I can just check with an app on my phone to see if it's closed rather than walking outside to check out a paranoia every night. Yeah. And I've still not installed that sensor <laughs> since summer. <laughs> every time I go out to check it, I come back in and Michelle says, if only you'd bought a sensor to see if that <laughs> to make this happen. But no. There we go. <laughs> I think it was one of the hardware stores. They they had a sale on this remote controlled. It's basically small plugs you put into the sockets, and they were actually at a decent size. So I think they can actually handle like uh, three point five uh, kilowatts. So you can actually run power tools off them, and so I have those in my workshop, and then I bought. So we now have them in our. Uh, uh, outside uh, shed or anything so I can I don't have to go outside to turn off the lights if I'm going out to look for something and now we have them in the living room and of course we have a couple of these programmable remotes for them and sometimes it's something that's happening in the cross programming so I can sit down in, in my workshop and then one of the overhead lamps just turn off because okay my wife turned off the lights in the living room and this <laughs> this one socket is actually somehow connected to that one and it's it's not very advanced and it's like to unprogram it you have to click a button and hold it for three seconds and wait for a click and it's like when you have three remotes and probably nine, ten of these <laughs> sockets in various rooms, it's, it's really hard to get the programming right on all of them. So there's always the one that's cross-programmed. So, of course, my wife can turn the lights off and then I press the button again to turn that light off and then it turns another outside light off on. I mean, so, yeah. Perhaps your wife uh, likes to be able to turn your workshop off. <laughs> to make you come, <laughs> come to bed. <laughs> yeah. No more tonight. 
<laughs> well, that being said, in the workshop, I have the lighting on the remote control, and I also have the uh, the dust collection. That's really nice. So when you're working with something, you can just press the button to start it. You don't have to go over and uh, yeah. uh, switch it on. Nice. We should wrap this up, I think. The timer is running out. <clears throat> yep. Three and a half minutes. You're going to use every minute. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't run over again. You know you got cranky the last time. <laughs> All right. And it's time to call it a night. Thank, thanks, everyone, for listening. And, of course, a special thanks to Chloe for enduring a couple of hours with us tonight. <laughs> it was nice. It's Hope it wasn't fun. too painful. No, it's been great. Thanks for having me. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Definitely. All right. Good night, people. See you next week. Bye. 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 Bye.